welcome to our spring boot course so in this lesson we are going to look into the application dot properties file right this is uh, the central nerve system of your spring boot application right you can customize and configure the behavior of your spring boot application using the application dot property file so let's quickly see what we are going to cover in this lesson we are going to see what is application dot property file and how to use it so let's quickly dive into one of the example for a better understanding first thing what is application dot property file this is a very common question right uh, typically when you create a spring boot application using either our editor or using a spring initializer you will find this application dot property file under the resource folder if it's not there you can create it you just have to make sure that it ends with the application dot property file right if you are following the earlier lessons one of the key feature of the spring boot is the lesser configurations it basically believes into a conventions of a configuration approach right there are a number of different okay there are a number of different things which are being taken care for you automatically by the spring boot uh, let's take an example of a uh, creating a web application in spring boot you tell the Spring Boot that I want to create a web application. It will have the embedded server ready for you, running on an 8080 port, have some default logging mechanism for you, uh, having the, the other, uh, uh, for example, the dispatcher server that created for you and other kind of a different things, right? But how does Spring determines that uh, 8080 should be the port I want to pick it up, right? Or uh, let's take an example, logging. What should be the logging format? Uh, what is the default logging format I should be using, right? They're not going to hard code it into the codes, right? If they will do it, how do you let, what are my options? How should I be overriding it, right? Let's say I don't want to run my application on an 8080 port. Or for, for example, I want to change the logging behavior for my application, right? So there is no way I can do it. So as I said, it basically follows a convention of a configuration approach right so spring boot has a way where it specifies the default configurations uh, which is through the application dot property file so your application specific property file is empty while there is a default property file which is being consulted by the spring boot if you are not specifying anything here so when the spring auto configurations feature gets into the picture it refers to the proper default property file to understand what are the configurations right what are the default properties and it use those properties until unless we specify some uh, or we want to override those properties right uh, so the overriding of the property happen through our custom application dot property file and our application dot property file is nothing but a combination of a key value pair so you provide a key it's a typically map right you provide a key the key which represent what kind of what what is the key which i want to override and the value represent what is the value by which i want to override it right so that's how the that's how the application dot property file work uh, let's take a very quick example i have our spring boot application our application dot property file is empty Let's quickly run this application. I run my application and just okay for this purpose, demo purpose, it's running on an 8080 port, right? So what how should I control this behavior? If I want to run this application not on an 8080, maybe my 8080 port is not free, correct? Uh, it is being used by some other application or processes. How should I configure it, right? For all these kind of a uh, behavior, or for example, if you are using a JPA as an auto configuration, right? You don't want to use a certain default configuration. You want to use something different. How should I tell the Spring Boot that hey, don't use the default uh, co configuration. Use my what I'm I'm telling you, right? So for those one, application or property file is your go-to point. In this case, let's change. Let's try to change the port from. Um, 8080 to 7070 okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this property server.port and 7070 so as i initially said it's a combination of a key and value pair 
key represent what is the property I want to change or override and value represent with what value. So what I'm telling Spring Boot that, hey, I want to run my Tomcat server on 7070 port, right? Okay, let's restart our application. All right, if you see our application started, let me to increase the font a little bit, okay? So our application started and this time it started with 7070. So how this happens? So there are two ways when, when Spring Boot starts, it refers to the uh, default configurations. And then it sees, okay, you have specified some uh, custom behavior, you want to override it. So that override, overriding feature will take a precedence, right? So that's how it works. And there are number of different property files. I'm just taking example, Spring Boot has an integration with the cloud. Spring Boot has an integration with JPAs. Uh, Spring Boot has an, uh, works very well with the AOPs, emails, uh, you name it. And uh, for example, they have an integration with Kafka, they have an integration with certain other third party systems, right? Those configurations, the integrations comes with the default configurations, which they think that they are best as per the industry standards. And now those things, how you can customize those things, it's a part combination of you create, you overriding it and one part of it is the application.property file, right? Now there is a very natural questions how do I know that what is the name of the key or how do I know that what are the total configurations out there, right? So that I can, I can have a reference for that one. So if you are using um, any of the editors, for example, I'm using in the IntelliJ, which I highly recommend, but for example, if you're using Eclipse or uh, any other tools, um, editors, most of those editors has a feature where it can, it knows what are the default configurations and uh, uh, you can always use those suggestions for example in intellij it knows if i start with the key name key with the server it knows these are the different keys start with the server correct but again this this will not give me the entire list of the configurations right so for that one you can always uh, use this url you can always bookmark this one there are a certain number of properties, as I was saying, right? There are a number of different properties. For example, caching, configurations, Hazelcast, JMX, you name it and you will find the configuration in this application.property file. This is, I mean it, you should be bookmarking it because they keep on adding the new properties, new integrations, and this is this should be your go-to point, right? It, it includes all the different def default configurations which will be used by the Spring Boot in case you don't specify or don't want to overwrite using your own application.property file, correct? So let's take an example of server.bot. These are the default configurations for your embedded servers. So if you don't specify the port, it's a 8080 port, right? If you don't specify, for example, the header size, the default is 8KB, correct? So these are the different configurations. Uh, all you have to do is refer to the right section and then make sure that you are overriding it. Uh, I'm just taking another example. Let's go to the top. They have a logging mechanism, right? If you don't specify the logging configurations, by default, Spring Boot is going to use this date format for your logging behavior. So if you want to override, just use this property in your local application.property file. All you have to do is use this as a key and then you can specify what if, whatever the date format you want. For example, you just want YYY, correct? It's just, just taking an example. If I start my application, if you are paying a little attention, now it only gives me the air because I want the logging date format only specifying the air, not anything else. And if I just comment this out, if I again restart my application, just pay a close attention to the logging format, okay? You see, it's showing you the year and then date, uh, sorry, the time in a certain format, right? So that's all about the application.property file. While we're going through this uh, uh, course, we are going to build a complete Spring Boot application. 
and we are going to use application or property file a lot we will be overriding the default configuration of the spring boot which is being provided by the spring boot and at the same time we are going to create a new configuration or so the customization for our application thanks for watching this video